Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking in just like that. That's right, season two, episode one. Oh my God, you guys, we're back. Oh, it's nice to be back, I think. No, it is. It's nice to be back with you all. Now, if you're here saying, Jen, where's the Harry and Meghan stuff? Don't worry, that's coming in separate video. If you are not watching it just like that, but here just for my commentary, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if, if you're watching along with me, well, I'm glad you're here too. I'm just so glad you're all here. I'm so excited. You guys are on my journey to hit 100,000 subs. I can't even believe what a difference a year makes, right? Uh, if you're just retuning in from last year. I'm just so glad you're here. And again, if you're new here and you're like, what's going on? Well, uh, my channel took off this or with this show last year um, when I did recap of the first season. And so I'm back to talk about the second season. And oh, do we have stuff to talk about? Ah, I'm just thrilled you're here. So much to get into with this. Can you believe they're back? Let's just have a conversation and then we'll dive into the recap. Can you even believe it? P.S. How much do I hate this poster? Look, I, whose face is that? Who is Charlotte? Um, let's talk general thoughts. What are yours? Did you watch the episode or are you just sticking in for my recaps? I'll tell you honestly. I didn't... I didn't hate this episode. Yeek. And what I mean is they kind of got... They, they got a little bit right this time. They definitely got some stuff wrong, but I found myself a little bit more interested this go around. I felt like season one was boring as shit and <laughs> problematic and everything. And so it's kind of a breath of fresh, right? A little bit um, with some of this, because again, I didn't, I didn't dislike this episode so much. Believe me, we're going to get into the stuff that I didn't like. If you're here for, well, Jen, what happened? Don't worry. They got a lot of stuff wrong we're going to talk about. But just overall thoughts. Okay, overall thoughts. Let's get into it. Uh, here's my notes. On, my first note under general is Che was a dick the whole time. Seriously, what are we doing with Che? They were a dick the whole time. They were not nice to anybody. We found out why at the end and we'll get into that, but it doesn't matter. I mean, they were a jerk. And so we'll talk about that. Uh, Miranda was a groupie the whole time. We'll talk about that. She's still doing that. We're in a rom-com, Carrie. Just, I don't understand her line delivery at all. I actually wrote down Charlotte's in a different show. I don't know what's going on with Charlotte this episode. She was... She does think she's in a rom-com. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, I actually wrote down Carrie was less annoying this time. She's definitely still annoying, but not. I didn't think she was as bad in this episode. Um, Miranda stayed naked pretty much the whole time this episode. I had to pay attention to my screenshots to not catch anything because, yeah, there's a lot of naked Miranda. Um, and she still can't control the volume of her voice in this episode. <laughs> She's still delivering, like I say, her lines like, ah, ah, she is being a groupie to Che and yelling for no reason at all. Even if they're next to each other in bed, she's like, Che! <laughs> it's like, oh my God, calm down. Um, but I did write down, this one was a little lighter and a little more fun. So we'll see what happens. Believe me, there's still stuff to talk about, but I, I'm, I was a little more pleasantly surprised than I intended or that I expected. Um, there's definitely still Michael Patrick Dickhead influence. We see that with The Rock <laughs> uh, helping to lace up Charlotte's dress and talking about the patriarchy. There's just a lot. So anyway, those are my general thoughts. I'm dying to know yours. You guys, can I just say, look at the screen. You ready? This is a load of pants. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so nice to say that again. I haven't said that in a long time. This is a load of pants. What are we doing? Why do we have Che? And since we're talking about Che, let's talk about this real quick. So this article came out of Daily Mail. And if you haven't read it, I would recommend go reading it. Um, so the actress, Sarah Ramirez, was uh, discussed by this New York Magazine interviewer. Um, basically... The person interviewing said that 
you know, in the show, Sarah Ramirez plays Che, this over the top version of a queer person. Um, and basically, the journalist says that the actress doesn't doesn't know where the character stops and where um, Sarah Ramirez starts, right? So it's like, basically, the character is unlikable and so is the person playing <laughs> Jay. So definitely take a look at that because it's pretty funny. That's exactly it. That That's my complaint this whole time, I will say. That was the worst part of the episode. Che, they're like a, an anchor dragging everything down. Um, so unlikable and rude throughout. We t- discussed that in season one, and we saw a lot of that in episode one. And again, we find out later. I'll go ahead and talk about it. Find out later, Che is struggling with, I don't know, an image, pro- um, not feeling good about themselves. they Apparently, they put on weight and they weren't feeling good about it and self-conscious. And then I guess living in California, they were, I don't know, doing a pilot and and feeling the pressure there about weight loss stuff. Okay. But it doesn't mean you get to be a dick. Who among us couldn't, (laughs) wouldn't want to, you know, change weight, whatever. We'll leave that that, at that. But but you don't get to go through life being a dick because you want to lose some weight. Like, again, who among us? (laughs) I just, I found the writing horrendous. I found the acting horrendous. Again, discussing Che, I found that, again, the whole episode tried to be lighter, and I appreciate that. I can, I can recognize that, you know. I'm not, I totally missed that from the first season, so I can recognize it here. But the wet blanket was Che. Totally drug it down. And I'll tell you what, I found Miranda annoying as shit in the first season, and she was annoying here. She's still playing a groupie. Still not annoying as Che. I'd take two hours of Miranda versus, well, I can't say that. I was going to say two minutes of Che. Okay. I'd take two hours of Miranda versus 20 minutes of Che. I just can't with Che. So let's get into the actual episode and talk about, let's just break it all down, right? (laughs) Pull up a chair, grab some tea, grab some coffee. Let's talk. Okay. So this is, of course, season two, episode one, and it's called Met Cute. Now, we hear music at the beginning, and I'm a huge Elton John fan. I love his music. We have Tiny Dancer remixed with The One. The One is a lesser-known song. It's one. It's actually one of my all-time favorite songs. So uh, immediately, my ears perked up. I was like, okay, okay. We got Carrie coming out of the closet. She's, um, I don't know, looking lighter in terms of the heaviness that her character had in the first um, season of this. And I don't know, it was a little bit back to Carrie, which was fun. Again, that scene of coming, walking out of the closet, you know, and just being Carrie with a little hop in her step was kind of fun to see again. She's got hot producer in her bed. And can I just say, hello? (laughs) So we got Franklin, the hot producer is there. Now we'll get into it. They seem to be just there for bedtime activities. They're Carrie's not ready for anything more. So um, we'll see where this is. I mean, I think it's all setting up for the, so that way she's free to, I don't know, maybe meet up with Aiden. We know he's coming. Where's Aiden? Um, Okay, we go over to Lisa Todd Wexler. I don't know why, but every time I would take notes on her, I have to write down Lisa Todd Wexler. I think she's just fancy. And (laughs) so it requires that I write down her whole name. Lisa Todd Wexler. Can I just say she looks gorgeous here? Absolutely gorgeous. Not fair. But um, we have a whole montage here of each of each of the ladies going to have sexy time with their partners, with the exception of Naya. We'll get into that. But okay. So Lisa Todd's going over to her husband, looking great, and um, they definitely are showing cracks in this relationship. So. I didn't really care about the what the extra characters in the first season. I did find them a little bit more likable in this one, although Lisa Todd bugs me again, calling her Lisa Todd. Lisa bugs me later, and we'll get into that. But she's she's yeah, it, the outfit bugs me, her attitude bugs me. <laughs> we'll get into that. Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte. Charlotte was probably I changed I mean, Samantha was my favorite from the first, from the original series, but Charlotte was probably my second favorite. Not probably, she was my second favorite and maybe even a close second. I really liked Charlotte. Don't love Charlotte in this, this whatever uh, reboot 
I just don't. I think the actress <laughs> has forgotten how to act. Maybe she just couldn't and I didn't notice in the original series. I mean, there's lots of stuff going on with her face. I don't mean to go there, but I'm gonna. Like, lots of puffy. And they're still sticking her in puffy sleeves. We're gonna get into the outfits because there are some doozies. But um, lots of puff going on here. I mean, she looks beautiful here, but the face. Lots going on with the face. Harry's back, and you know I sigh a huge relief with that because I just figured, oh, God, they're going to kill him off. Anybody we like, like Harry, <laughs> they're just going to kill him off. You know, they basically wrote off Steve, so why not kill off Harry? I figure that's coming. We got Seema, and can I just say, I meant to write down the actress's name. I need to look it up, but this woman is so beautiful, it's not fair. I get, I find myself staring at her. Uh, I do. I just think she's so incredibly beautiful. This this actress, this woman, she's gorgeous. The way her hair is, this outfit on her, I, I do. I just find myself staring at the screen. And speaking of staring at the screen, so we got Seema and then she's with Zed. Now, of course, we talk about this. If you watch Emily in Paris, he's on Emily in Paris. Hello, Antoine. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, of course, if you're a fan of the original series, which why would you watch this if you weren't? Uh, Sex and City, he played, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking. Was it Prada? Prada. He worked at Prada. And uh, Carrie, when she was dating Burger, went in and uh, introduced Burger to Prada. And her guy at Prada. Remember, she even set Charlotte up with him. But we have to forget that part. And and he's playing a different part here. So it's kind of a funny um, thing that they did. Okay. Can we just talk for like 14 hours about Miranda? Let me just say, I know she's going to bug me. Che is the absolute worst. But Miranda looks good here. I, when she walked around the corner, I, I was like, whoa, okay. Finally, we got the red hair back. The no stupid wig. My God. Um, the wardrobe I did not care for too much in general. I mean, obviously season one was a fucking train wreck and I think it's coming for us again. But I don't hate this dress. I mean, hanging out by a pool in California. Sure. I don't hate this dress and I think it looks nice on Miranda and I just can't even believe I'm saying this. Like I literally wrote down like Miranda. I don't hate Miranda in this one. <laughs> it's coming. Don't worry. It's coming. All right. And then Dr. Naya Wallace. So she is alone. You think she's coming out to be sexy with somebody? No, nah, she's alone with Netflix. Be sexy with Netflix. Um, <laughs> so I'd written down, I'll find her husband's name. I have it written somewhere in my notes, but we find out that they're not doing so hot. I thought they were separated because I thought that's what she told Carrie, but then later she tr tries to like FaceTime him. I don't know. I, they're they're in a weird spot, but it sounds like after this, they done. So, so we'll see what happens there. All right. So we go back to Carrie, who has slept with hot producer Franklin, and they are watching cooking shows in bed. So Seema ends up calling, and we find out that they have the Met Gala or the Met Ball, I guess, coming up. She sent Carrie some expensive caviar, and this ends up being what the episode is kind of revolved around. It's about this going to the Met Gala and the theme is veiled beauty. So thank you writers for that. Uh, I don't understand the Met Ball and I'm okay not understanding the Met Ball. I really don't understand the themes. I do look at what everybody wears. I'm talking about in real life, not on the show every year, but I don't understand it and I'm okay not understanding it. So in a weird act, we see Carrie cooking. I think it's supposed to show her growth. But before, remember, she used her oven for storage. But she is poaching an egg to go with her caviar. Okay, so Charlotte ends up buzzing the door. It's very early. Franklin is there, um, and he's leaving. And I literally wrote down, Carrie's not acting human here. She's being very weird. And I know it's because Franklin slept over, but... Come on, like it's not that big of a deal. Just say, hey, Charlotte, this is Franklin, Franklin, Charlotte, the end, you know? <laughs> it just, it was a very awkward scene. And I felt like, again, Carrie was not being human in that scene. But she's making her poached eggs and caviar. I literally have in my notes next, Charlotte face, Charlotte face. 
And I'm realizing, I'm so, I don't mean to be awful, but Kristen Davis forgot how to act. She's truly terrible in her scenes. And I wonder if that's what's throwing Carrie slash Sarah Jessica Parker off. Maybe she forgot to act too. I don't know, but it, it was kind of painful to watch this. I felt like, I know they were supposed to be awkward, but they played it so over the top. It was just weird. All right, so we go to Lisa Todd Wexler, and this part I just can't care about. Like I said, I did like the, I keep calling bonus characters a little bit more this episode than I did all of last season, but I don't care about busy mom life because I watched this show <laughs> to escape busy mom life. We uh, Right? A lot of us have busy mom life. I don't need to see it on TV. I know I, it's trying to be relatable, but I found it kind of annoying, and I found her husband kind of annoying, right? Um... Okay, so she's been up since four working. She's trying to balance. She's trying to secure financing. The husband says, well, I can cut you a check. She finds this unholy uh, uh, offensive. And I don't, <laughs> I don't really understand why. And I don't really care, basically. All right, so we go over to Carrie and Charlotte who are talking. I wouldn't hate Carrie's outfit here if she's going to Ascot, but I hate it for just taking a walk with Charlotte. I don't, I don't understand what's happening. And the dress is whatever, but the hat is so stupid. And then Charlotte, I don't know what's going on with Charlotte. Charlotte took down some drapes at a Hawaii hotel and wrapped them around herself. I don't, I don't know what this outfit is. Like the costumes, the costume department just needs to be revamped, let go, whatever. But again, this was still better than all of last season. I'll give them that. Um, real quick, when, when they were talking, we did find out it's a three-week time lapse from the end of the last series and the beginning of this one, or whatever season. It's about three weeks of time lapse. Now, speaking of wardrobe, can we get some clothes for Miranda? Because the whole episode, she is... In this or less, mostly naked. I actually can't show pictures uh, too much of the scene because we see her fully naked. She goes to one of those deprivation chambers and it doesn't matter. Here's the thing. I literally wrote down, she just does these weird excited lines and it's not like... There's nothing to be excited about. She's just talking to her friend. She's like, I'm in California! I'm hearing myself and I'm realizing they've all forgotten how to act. It really is over the top. It's like they <laughs> they think they need to be extra in order to make their characters, I don't know, I think they're trying to be likable and, and kind of missing it. But anyway, Miranda is, uh, to quote Carrie, Annie, get your clothes on. But <laughs> so again, I can't even show you all the pictures of that scene. Miranda gets stuck in the deprivation chamber for a minute and we just... See her fully naked. Oh, breathe, Jen, breathe. Okay, this is the most painful episode, or what part of the episode. We got Che being a dick again. I, I'm sorry. They are. They're such a jerk to everybody. Che was at a stand-up wardrobe fitting. Is that a thing? Believe it or not, I actually did stand up for a little while. Don't worry. You don't know who I am. You won't be able to find me, but <laughs> I'm nobody. But I did. That wasn't a thing for me, maybe because I was nobody, but um, stand-up wardrobe fitting. i That's what they called it, but I'm guessing it's for the, um, I don't know, pilot show, whatever Che was working on. So it was that kind of fitting, but they literally call it a stand-up wardrobe fitting. It's horrendous. It's awful. I mean, I never became a star like Che did. My God, you guys, we find out the name of the show is Che Pasa. It's like... Can you, can you not just, can you be not annoying? It's just not possible. Again, I go back to that article that I was talking about in uh, Daily Mail, where the interviewer points out that Sarah Ramirez now takes himself so seriously as the character Che, neither one have a sense of humor anymore. And I feel like that's where we're at. And I feel like the writers, Michael Patrick Dickhead, have such a thing for Che and ramming Che down our throats that it's like they can't not make Che annoying. It, it, che is the most annoying character I believe I've ever seen on any show ever. And that's saying something. Where I'm going with this is not only is Che written horribly and acting horribly, 
again, they're being a jerk to everybody. The wardrobe people are just there to help them with this pilot or stand-up show or whatever the hell's going on. With Che Pasa, my God, worst name ever. And um, Che cannot not be a dick to everybody. There are nicer ways to say, yeah, I don't think I want blue hair. But again, they're just going out of their way to not be nice and be horrible. So they have nothing going for them, right? Just nothing. No personality, no fun, no nothing. But it hit me like a ton of bricks this episode. I had said earlier, Miranda is acting like a groupie the whole time. Well, I really think that's the writers doing a shitty job trying to make us think, well... You know, because I'm not a fan of Miranda. I know a lot of you are. Some of you, it's your favorite, you know, character on the show. That's fine. Probably not after and just like that season one. Am I right? Um, but from the original show, some of you, uh, sorry, Miranda is your favorite. So I feel like the writers are doing this cheap trick where it's like, okay, we're going to make Miranda fangirl out over Che and act like a groupie. So that way us, the audience, will be like, okay, there must be something with Che. No, there's nothing with Che. Che sucks. All right, and I'm staying on pictures of Che. You're welcome. Blech. Um, because at this point, Miranda is fully nude. She's having her eye issue in the deprivation chamber. I can't show you pictures of that, so I'm. I got some extra pictures of Che. There you go, Che. Okay. Uh, all right. Then we got Carrie meeting up with Jackie, played by Bobby Lee. Um, he wants to go to the Met Gala. Every, everything's about this Met Gala. There's not really any substance to this. It's, I mean, we find out later Smoke's going to help tailor or alter um, Carrie's dress for the event, but we'll get there. Okay, so Lisa, Todd, and Charlotte are together having fittings. Again, all about the Met Gala. So Anthony is there, and can I just say, I, I love Anthony so much. He, I'm glad we had a little bit more of Anthony in this this episode. I think it added to the lightness that was there um he's talking about rich people's problems but um charlotte's bringing anthony as her plus one you guys when i saw this when i saw this you know where they're making her dress i knew and i think you probably knew too i knew this was going to end up being that stupid what do we call it my fair shitty dress that she ends up wearing later it's awful it's so bad you guys i don't understand the theme i don't understand the look i don't understand what they were thinking with her outfit um, anyway, but I could just tell from the, from the way that they were, you know, they had this, they were constructing the dress. I just knew it was going to be that shitty dress, but yay, Anthony. Um, okay. So we go over to Charlotte's house. She's got the puffy sleeves rocking. They're all about that on Charlotte. They really want to stick her in puffy stuff. Arr, I'm a pirate. <laughs> I'm Charlotte. Arr. We got Rock and Lily. I don't care about the kids. I literally wrote my notes. Is she on a different show? Because she's just acting over the top. She, again, the actor, she seemed to forget, Kristen Davis seemed to forget how to act. Maybe she never had it and I just ignored it. I'm not really sure. But um, turns out Harry thinks he's going to the Met. Oh no, Charlotte's in a pickle. What's she going to do? See, she's like in a sitcom. A totally different show than any everybody else. All right, Carrie's podcast. She's giving out relationship advice, which I find very funny because... That was the whole thing. She could talk about sex and relationships, but she wasn't so good at the advice, right? Um, <laughs> so Franklin asked Carrie to a bourbon party and things get weird, right? Carrie's being weird. All right, you guys, I'm so sorry to have to do this to you. Ready? Then we go back to Miranda and Che, and I'm going to have to leave it on this picture. You're like, Jen, why aren't the pictures scrolling past? Because I can't show you what's happening in this scene. It involves Miranda trying to attach a strap on, and for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't want me to show that, so I'll just show you this. You can imagine what's going on. So they're about to have sexy time, but you guys, you guys, when things get real shitty, I highlight them in my notes, so I had to highlight this. Okay. Well, first of all, I wrote every scene nude because I think Miranda started out naked maybe in this one. Every scene. Um, che literally tells Miranda, who's putting on a device <laughs> in this scene, Che says, and I quote, can we move this along? I have a set at the commie store at nine. Just let that sink in. I'm, I'm pausing for dramatic effect. Che is so horrible and unlikable, I'm telling you. And then Michael Patrick Dickhead made a point of saying, oh, you guys, whatever, couldn't handle Che, so we're going to give you more this season. No, 
No. It's not that we couldn't handle Che. It's that you wrote the most unlikable character in the entire world. And now I'm beginning to think the actress is the character and very unlikable. And I hate saying that because I loved Callie Torres on um, Grey's Anatomy. Same actress. But uh, this character is horrendous. And I do blame the writers mostly. But uh, yeah, Che had that line. Can we move this along? I have a set at the comedy store at nine. But we're supposed to like Che, right? We're supposed to be into Che? No. If a guy said that, right, to one of the women, you'd be like, what a dick. What is this guy's problem? You know what I mean? Like, uh, Whoever, Miranda needs to dump him, you know, whatever, um, whoever it was. So, but we're supposed to find Che likable because of lines like that? I don't think so. So then Carrie is on the phone with Che and Carrie is asking, what about your friend Franklin? And I wrote, what is happening? Why is Carrie asking about Franklin now? You guys, it's coming back. All those feelings of what is happening. Okay. Why is Carrie asking about Franklin now? They've already fucked. Why is she calling up Che to say, what about your friend Franklin? Listen, I'm not even judging. I don't care. Bang whoever you want. That's not what I mean. I just mean, why are you asking about him after you've already, <laughs> after he's been inside you, you know? <laughs> like, you didn't learn stuff about his personality then? Like, <laughs> why do you need Che to tell you if you like him or not? I just thought that was a weird device but um she confesses that she's sleeping with him carrie just likes the sex after the podcast i i don't have a problem with the storyline actually with the that's fine i think franklin is completely hot so for that reason i want to see more of him on the screen and again i'm sorry for what i'm putting on the screen now let me move to this but uh i don't mind that carrie's storyline is she just wants to bone franklin and that she's not ready for a relationship that doesn't bother me I just don't understand this. Why does she need to involve Che in this? And why is it a big deal? Just have a conversation with Franklin about it. I just don't, I think, I think Carrie's making a bigger deal out of it than it needs to be. And I think the writers honestly suck. I think it's, I get what they're trying to do. It's like, look, women can do it too. Uh, we know, have sex, enjoy, be in a relationship. Don't be in a relationship. We got this. We've been doing it for years. Did you see the original show? You got, The writers just don't seem to have any relationship with the original show anymore. Che says this line about some relationships are not about the relationship. It's about sex. No shit. Again, see original series. Miranda has a stroke and thinks that Che is talking about her. She gets all neurotic, takes off the strap on thing and and says and she just starts getting neurotic and starts to yell her lines again and offers to go see Che perform. Because remember, remember, uh, can we move this along? I have a set at the comedy store at nine. What a dick. Um, <laughs> but, uh, offers to see Chase set and Chase like, nah, babe, still working on material. See what I mean? The writers appear to be confused as to what's going on. They don't know. They're trying to make us like Che, but they're writing them so wholly unlikable that it just doesn't make any sense. And again, to compensate, they're making a uh, freaking Miranda into a fangirl and, and it's making me dislike Che even more. Okay, so then we go back over to Seema, who's in bed with Zed. Yes, please. And uh, we find out that Zed wants her to meet his son. I guess his son's going to be in town as well as his ex-wife. And he wants Seema to meet them at lunch on Monday, which trans it, it goes into the next scene. So we got Charlotte, Carrie, Seema, Anthony, and they're at lunch talking about this. She's trying to decide, should I do this? Should I stick with the man or go to the Met? Why can't, why? Why do you have to decide that? Why can't you just say, oh, I have the Met. I'm going to be getting ready that day. Anybody would understand that. But she's freaking out and um, saying she can't go to the Met, which makes zero sense. Charlotte tells Anthony about Harry really wanting to go to the Met and that he didn't go to prom, so this is his prom. I... This storyline really, I can't care about. They gave Charlotte and Harry, like, again, a sitcom, everybody loves Raymond style plot where it's like, oh no, what do I do? Zoinks, you know, <laughs> add a laugh track in, you know, um, there's a whole miscommunication. Harry thinks he's going. Charlotte was supposed to take Anthony. Harry's going to be bummed if he doesn't get to go because he didn't get to go to prom. It's, it's very stupid. Who cares? 
Um, but Carrie says that Anthony can be her plus one. So problem solved, I guess. Zoinks. Laugh track. All right. So then we go over to Naya and she is having dinner and this very cute guy. I wrote down his name. Is it Toussaint? Toussaint? Um, comes over and flirts with her. He talks to her about chocolate cake and she politely tells him that she's married by pointing to her wedding ring. And so it is weird because before this, she had said she's separated, but whatever. I'm not going to think too much about it. Maybe she just wasn't ready to go there. We do see her. We'll get to it, but she tries with her husband later and it doesn't go well. So I think that's that on that relationship. Okay, I'm going to need to take a shot to talk about this, you guys. And just like that, Che is back doing comedy. Holy crap, you guys. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand. I think Michael Patrick Dickhead is in a competition with himself to see how much we could dislike Che. Congratulations, it's working. Che is doing the worst stand-up comedy I've ever heard in my entire life, talking about what it's like to be lazy in L.A., I got to take an Uber from the bathroom to the bedroom. Waka waka. You know, you guys, I cannot with this bullshit. It's awful. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't understand it. Is there not a, is there not a comedian that they can just hire to write these lines? Because this is the worst shit I've ever heard. If I went out, if I got dressed and went to a comedy club and I went out and I heard this, I would be so pissed that I left my house for this crap. It's awful. Oh, you guys, it continues. Che gets off stage. Miranda's back to being a groupie. She walks up. You're so good. She has to yell her lines. She hugs Che. And what does Che say? Don't hug me. What the fuck? Again, if a guy had said this to one of the girls back in the day, we'd all be like, what the hell's wrong with that guy? Nope, we're supposed to like Che. Just a reminder, that's supposed to be the likable one. Blech. Um... So Chase says, you surprised me. I'm at work. Um, okay. Slow your roll a little bit on that. I would say the people having to put up with listening to you are the ones that are having the job right now. All right, let's go into a painful scene we kind of maybe saw coming. Naya tries to FaceTime Andre, and I, <laughs> the writing is not clear, but we all gathered that uh, things aren't good, and she's trying to have sexy time with him. She had some wine. She's feeling good. She's trying to have sexy FaceTime and he won't FaceTime her. So we find out he's not alone. We got Heidi in a hat there with him. And, um, she ends up telling him about the super fine man that hit on her at the bar. And basically she says goodbye. And then she says, fuck around and find out. So I think that's the end for Nia and Andre. All right, so then we go to Carrie. Jackie and Smoke come over. We get a mention of Stanford. He sent her the kimono from Japan. Okay, I've totally forgot to mention this, but when Carrie was having her My Fair Lady moment earlier when she thought she was dressed for Ascot and the white dress and the silly hat, she actually mentions, it was Charlotte. Charlotte mentions Samantha. So we get a Char- we get a Samantha mention and we get a um, Stanford mention. I'm still pissed at how they handled, well, both of them, but I'm specifically talking about uh, Stanford here because uh, they never acknowledged him or Magda, the actors passing on. They just kind of went along with their business in the first season because, you know, that was a shit show and train wreck. But speaking of, let's talk about Carrie's outfit. I hate this outfit, not the kimono, the dress that they're trying to put her in. So they talk about the stomach flu going around. These seamstresses have it. So Smoke is trying to help um, Carrie fit into the dress. I hate the stripes. I hate the look. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like a, what is it, a, like a cover-up I'd put on at the beach. I just, I just really don't like it. A weird thing happens where Jackie smells Franklin in Carrie's room. I don't understand what that was about. It kind of freaks me out because I was thinking, well, do you smell sex too? <laughs> but uh, Carrie explains they're not a couple. It's just sex. And Jackie, for whatever reason, explains men have feelings too. Okay. Uh, che and Miranda. Oh my God, you guys. Again, Che is back to being a dick. So Che's writing in bed and mad that Miranda wants to be snuggly. She's pulling that I'm working again. And I just think, 
okay, I understand and respect that somebody has to work, but then don't do it in bed. You know what I mean? I just don't think you can get mad at your partner for wanting to snuggle you while you're in your bed. You know? Versus if you're working at your desk, yeah, that'd be a little, you know what I mean? It's totally normal, I think, to say, okay, I'm working but in bed. I don't know. I just didn't think, I just think Che's a psychopath. But um, <laughs> Miranda is, um, I don't know, over reading and over analyzing everything. She says that something's different. There's something you're not telling me being neurotic. And well, I say she's being neurotic. She is, but I kind of get it because Che's so awful. It's hard to tell what Che's thinking. All right. So Miranda says there's something different. There's something you're, you're just not telling me. And Che is like, I'm afraid to tell you. So we all think it's going to be, you know, I fuck somebody else. I assume that's where they were going, but nah, she's struggling with weight issues. I'm not even going to make fun of that. Who among us, right? Who among us doesn't struggle with weight issues, but I am going to make fun of Che as such a horrible written character that I don't even like typically I'd be like, oh shit, that sucks. That's a terrible feeling. Again, who among us hasn't been there where you just don't feel great about yourself and you feel like you want to change some stuff and you don't, you know, it, doesn't put you in a sexy headspace. So I get that. I think they were trying to be relatable with it, but they did it in such a piss poor way. Che can't communicate for shit. So she just ends up looking like a dick. So again, Che is pushing Miranda away, doesn't want Miranda's arms around the belly. And Miranda thought Che was not serious about the relationship and it was just sexual. And <sighs> There is a sweet scene where Miranda's trying to make Che feel beautiful, but I hate Che, so I don't care. Uh, che says, uh, I am beautiful. So then, again, Che has one moment of vulnerability and then goes back to the most unlikable person ever in the history of TV. And then Che says, fuck TV, let's get pizza. Carrie calls Franklin, and I think she's making a way bigger deal out of this than it needs to be. All she'd have to do is send him a text and be like, hey, man. I don't know about bourbon. I don't think I'm ready, but you know, sex is still on the table. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Let's have sex on a table. No, something about that. Um, but, uh, but you know, she's really happy about the Thursday arrangement, that sort of thing. So she calls, she makes a big deal out of it. It really doesn't matter. This scene was weird to me too. Seema goes to meet Zed and I'm thinking it must be pretty serious if you're meeting his son and his ex, that's a big deal, right? Well, Victoria, the, I don't even know, that's not even her, it's like Victoria, um, Victoire, uh, is, ends up spilling that Zed is still living with her and then talked about being in bed with him. It was very bizarre. It's just a way, I think, to end the relationship, but I just don't, again, the writing is lazy. So it's like, oh, I found this out. Now I can go to the Met. Problem solved. Now that's all well and good, but can we talk for about 14 hours about this stupid hair? What is going on? I don't understand the Met. I keep saying that. I don't. I say that. I d don't take me literally. I know I'll get a thousand comments explaining what the Met is. It's cool. I just mean, <laughs> I don't want to understand the Met. It seems pretentious. It seems like these themes are just a way to spend a like a ridiculous amount of money on a theme that is just, I don't know, kitsch or something. I don't know, camp, something like that. Well, this one is, again, veiled beauty. We can imagine where Carrie's going with this, but the hair is so stupid, I hate it. Make it stop, make it stop. But don't worry, it gets dumber. We'll get to that. Uh, Seema tells Zed why she's leaving, and I guess that's that. Anthony calls Carrie and is like, Poor Anthony gets dicked around a lot this episode. Now, I like Anthony a lot, so I don't mind any excuse for him to be on the screen. It's fine, but he does. He gets dicked around a lot. He is supposed to go with Carrie. Remember, as her plus one. Well, Carrie's like, sorry, Seema's back in. I'm taking her with me because she dumped Zed, so now she can go. It's <laughs> same day. She can go. It's fine. Okay, um, so poor Anthony, he gets sticked around again, so he thinks he's got to stay home. Okay, so this is what I didn't love. I didn't love this Lisa Todd stuff. I do she's interesting, I guess. I don't, I can't care about her husband. I can't, I don't care. There's this weird scene where he wants to go down on her while she's getting ready for the Met, and 
yeah, you might think, ooh, hot. But then reality sets in. It's like, oh, shit, I've got like 30 things to do and I'm not dressed yet and this car's coming. So it's just an awkward scene and I don't know. I think the purpose was to show that he's not really listening to her, but it just felt awkward and forced and I'm not into it. Again, Charlotte's in a completely different show. I'm still waiting for that laugh track. She's being laced up into this corset. I do think her hair and makeup look nice. Her pa- her face looks less puffy. <laughs> but seriously, what is this outfit? She has her kids lacing her up into it. They're talking about the patriarchy. I- I'm good on all that. Thank you. Okay, can we talk about this for about four hours? I literally have in my notes stupid feathers. I don't hate the dress. Now, I say that. I actually don't hate the dress because they could have done a lot worse. I don't love the dress. I think um, Lisa Todd Wexler, the actress, has a beautiful body. I mean, she showed it off earlier. She's gorgeous. I don't know. This dress just doesn't, it's an empire waist. Like, you know, I, I just don't think this is the right cut for her. But that aside, the color's nice. She looks beautiful. What the hell's on her head? What is this feathers? What is happening? It's like a disco ball. It's like a disco and a chicken exploded on her head. I don't, I don't understand it. She looks insane. Um, she's having a fight with her husband through the feathers. Again, I think they're trying to make her relatable, but she's not. And I don't, I don't know where they're going with this. It was just painful to watch. So it's showing that, oh no, she dropped the ball. What? Uh, she didn't reconfirm the, the car, so they have to walk. Again, what? I I know. It's to show that she's in charge of it all and she's not getting any help from him. But I just don't care. I don't. I don't care. I'm not that invested in her, so it's hard for me to deal with her daily squabbles. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It's like, do you want to watch You know, Jay and I have a fight over who was supposed to do the dishes? Probably not, you know, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But no, it's just, it's, it's just not interesting. God, and then we go to Charlotte. What's Charlotte wearing? They're back to puff the magic dragon face. I don't, I don't understand this. It's horrible. Her tits are up to her neck. I don't understand why all the details. Remember that? Was it Coco Chanel take something off? Remember, Count- side note, did you know that Countess Leanne tried to make that her quote? Like, something she made up. But anyway, um, yeah, that was like, she had an app, Countess Luann did forever ago. God, it was a long time ago. And uh, it had some of her quotes on it, meaning the Countess's quotes. And she tried to make that her quote, not her quote. Anyway, um, what's going on with Charlotte? I don't understand. I keep saying I don't understand. But seriously, what is this? This is horrendous. She looks like she looks like circus meets My Fair Lady meets S&M. And it's awful and I hate everything about it. I really do. I really do. It's it's more than a costume. It's ridiculous. But she and Harry have an inexplicable fight because Harry doesn't get to take pictures with Rihanna. Sure, that's a thing. Just it's a very flimsy storyline. It's like they didn't know what to do with Charlotte and Harry, so they gave him that and put him in a sitcom, added a laugh track, and here we are. So she basically says, no, Harry, you're not going now. I'm taking Anthony. Calls up Anthony and I guess Anthony, I mean, Anthony's excited to go and I'm excited, but I just, again, they're just jerking around Anthony. I just don't love that. And God, I hate this outfit so much. I can't stop staring at it. I hate it. When can she ever wear that again? And I guess that's the point is you don't, but it's horrible. All right, Seema. I actually like her outfit here. I don't, again, I don't understand the Met. I keep saying that. I don't know if it's, is that, the right thing? Is it fancy enough? But think about all these women. Are they all going to the same event? Because they look insane. Um, Speaking of looking insane, we got Carrie. So she could not fit. They couldn't get that dress to work for her. So she's like, maybe I have something in my closet for veiled beauty. Look at this hair. It's horrible. Oh, I hate it so much. Oh my God. Okay. So um, she's like, maybe I have something I can wear. Let me just go to my closet. (laughs) Hee hee. And then lo and behold, she ends up wearing the dress that she would have worn. To, the one she beat up big, <laughs> she wore to beat up big with the flowers. And she she talks about it. She wore it once and it was bad. So here comes the big dumb feather again and the dress and smoke had made the cape to go Oh, you it. guys, I cannot with this bullshit. What am I looking at? What is this? I hate it. I hate it. I know not all of you hate the wedding dress, but you're wrong. It's horrible. <laughs> 
it is. And then again, she's wearing this. Charlotte's wearing what she wore. Just think about all of them. They're all going to different events. Um, if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to say it's Seema, but I might be biased because I just think she's so beautiful. Um, yeah, so we get to see this with the stupid blue, blue flower and, um, it says, and just like that, I repurposed my pain. And I don't hate that line. I don't because I get what they're saying. And and again, it was a little bit later this episode. So I think they're trying to maybe, I'm hopeful, maybe I'm too optimistic. They're trying to move away from some of the darkness of the first season because that thing was dark. But my God, you guys. I can't. I cannot with this. I cannot. I cannot take a season of Tay and all the bullshit. And Miranda being a groupie. Oh, it's a lot. But we can do this together, right? We got this, you guys. Oh, I can't believe we're back here. I cannot believe we're talking about this again. And this is where I really, really, really need you to comment. I want to read your comments. I need to know about the looks. I need to know if you agree, if you are optimistic, if you are pessimistic, if you hate Che as much as I do, if if you think Michael Patrick D. Head is full of himself as much as I do, just let me know all of that in the comments below. I just, I'm so glad to be back with you all. I'm so glad to be talking about this with you and hating this with you and all of the above. And it, listen, if you're new here, if you're, you know, one of my Harry and Megan regulars, I appreciate you watching so much. It really does mean so much to me. I truly, I truly do. And if you're one of the ones that's like, I don't watch a show. I just listen to recaps. My gosh, you don't know how much that makes my day. You don't. It really does. It means the whole wide world to me. I appreciate you so much. But uh, yeah, so this is episode one. They already released episode two. So I'm going to dive right back in to that. So I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know if it'll be up today or tomorrow, but it will be up soon. I'll do the best I can and we will continue on with the shit show. And then it'll be, um, sounds like they're going to release one a week for 11 episodes. I found out it's 11 episodes this season. I'd mistakenly said they're releasing three episodes today. It's two. So ignore that. But um, we'll dive right back in and, and jump into the next episode, like I say, and uh, I'll get that up as soon as I possibly can. Might be tomorrow. Might be this weekend, but it'll probably be either later today or tomorrow. I know me. I, I can't not make videos on this stuff, right? <laughs> and I know you. I know you want to watch the videos. So we'll keep going with this discussion. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Guys, this is a load of pants. And if you're like, Jen, why do you keep saying that? That's from season one. I I was <laughs> so hating the show um, that I had to look, I kept saying, this is awful. This is awful. This sucks. This sucks. So I just thought I need to look up a new way to say this. And so I Googled it and, um, load of pants came up and I know it has a different meaning in the UK, which makes it kind of funnier to me. But, uh, yeah, this is load of pants, which is a fancier way of saying this show sucks. So <laughs> anyway, guys, I appreciate you being here. I do still have, this is load of pants merch. So check that out as well as make it make sense. That's one of my new expressions. If you haven't been here in a while, make it make sense. Might apply to this show as well. Um, and of course, I'm still selling a ton of recollections may vary. That has to do with Harry and Megan, if you're following that train wreck. And listen, if you're not, you probably want to jump in because it is interesting. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Let me give a plug to my Patreon. And the reason I'm doing that is because... I recap all Sex and the City episodes over there. Um, some of you have stayed with me the whole time watching those, and some of you have been uh, are rejoining me now. So just know on my Patreon, I'm going through the whole original series, episode by episode, having fun and laughs over there. And so you can find that at patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. I am on season six right now, so I'm almost done with the whole series. I have really enjoyed recapping it, and I've enjoyed people chiming in in the comments over there, so check that out. Um, five bucks a month, and it gets you access to the whole catalog. I have, like I say, I'm up to season six, so go listen. But oh, as always, guys, thank you so much for being here. So much more to go with this show. Can't wait to read your thoughts on this. Can't wait to hear your reactions on this. I can't wait to jump online and read critical reactions because I didn't want to do it yet. I wanted to come at this with a blank slate and my own opinions and not get swayed. So as soon as I 
in this recording in just a minute, I'm going to jump online and read how people responded to this episode. I'm very curious. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to bring you the next episode. Check back lots and make sure you're subscribed. I'm driving to get that 100,000. I can't believe I'm even in the ballpark. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's because of you all. And I thank you. And I hope you have the best day. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Take care. Bye-bye.